In the Viking missions, famously, the rocks came back, those pictures, depicted the Martian sky as blue, and the rocks were too pink. And it took them, I was at the 30th anniversary of this thing, and these guys were talking about it. It took them about a day and a half to realize that the cameras had been calibrated on Earth and the pictures needed to be recalibrated. So they found, intuitively, that if you look at the shadow, you can infer the color of the sky. So those of you out there haven't sat through this, go outside on a sunny day. If you're in Ithaca, New York, where I went to college, there, there is, is no a, sun. There's no there sun. is a sunny day scheduled in the next 10 years. Yes, yeah. Then you make a shadow on something white, like my shirt would be good, and you'll see the shadow is gray, to be sure, but it's also ever so slightly light blue. And that's because the sun is not the only source of light here on Earth's surface. Blue the sky, sky is a source of light. Looking, looking at me, nothing you. but orange skies blue on the sky. other planet. Yeah, so blue on Mars, sky. the sky is orange or salmon colored or what have you. Mm -hmm. And so they found that by looking at the shadow, they could infer the color of the sky and then how much the colors of the rocks had been influenced on the camera on the images uh, by the color of the sky. That's very clever. So what you're saying is, to summarize, whatever's going on in the shadow is not directly influenced by the sun. It's directly influenced, but it's not the only influence. No, no, no. Sorry. You get, you get a, an authentic background lighting mm. from the rest of the sky. Yeah. Yeah. So let's send a shadow caster to Mars. I was in a meeting A stratocaster? That's a, that's that's a, a that's guitar. That's the blues guitar. Okay. The, and you... <laughs> I don't know if you are a Stratocaster master, but <laughs> there is uh, the idea was to send this post, the stick, to Mars to cast a shadow. And I was in the meeting, and I said, "Aren't there many, many things to cast a shadow? No, we need it to fall on something precisely calibrated or well-known colors or grayscale." And so I was in the meeting. Now my dad had the misfortune of being a prisoner of war in World War II for almost four years. And he told the story often of walking in the, Japan, in uh, China at first, and then Japan at the end of the war. They mm -hmm. got as Japanese influence shrunk, they got moved to the South Island of Japan for the last year of the war. But he would, by all accounts, stick a shovel handle in the soil and watch the shadow and reckon when it was lunchtime, kind of thing. And so he it's came very back. very sundial of him. That's yes. right. So he wrote a book about sundials. He was the astronomy merit badge counselor. He made a sundial. That would be for the Boy Scouts. For the Boy Scouts. Yes. So I was in the meeting. They're going to send a metal stick to Mars to cast a shadow. So you have genetic proclivity. I'm just jumping out of my chair. You guys, we got to make that into a sundial. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you didn't put a shovel here for so this. So they were yeah. all looking at me like, dude, it's the space program. Bill, I see you're wearing a watch. No, come on. <laughs> It'll so be say, like people this, who says, speak Klingon, except Ma it'll be real. Mars 2004, <laughs> two worlds, one sun. That's so Lou Friedman, one of our founders, came up with that. He, we, we were having dinner at a place that's now, it was uh, Louise Trattoria. Now it's a uh, cheesecake factory. But he said, uh, one sun, two worlds. And in a few seconds, we all went, oh, no, no, two worlds, one sun. That's really inspirational. Light. Shadows on Mars are cast by the same life-giving star as shadows on Earth. Now, wait, wait, there's more. On the edge around the dial is a message to the future. We built this uh, instrument in 2003. It arrived here in 2004 to study the Martian environment, look for what signs of water and life. And on the last of the four panels... I can't panels, read this. What is it? Is it in Braille? What is it's it? It's in a uh, younger person's font. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it what it says is. on the last of the four, it says, to those who visit here, we wish a safe journey and the joy of discovery. And that's written in English because, of course, aliens well, read English. Well, English, no, no, it's written for humans. So, oh, other humans who can Yeah, arrive. English is the language of aerospace, even now. And so. And of uh, aviation, too. Yeah, yeah aviation. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's, it's optimistic. People are going to be there. And they're going to go up to that thing and look at it and think about the, the way people, we go up to the Plymouth Rock. The way we go up to what Plymouth, have you? Yes, right. a pyramid, a, um, a Machu Picchu. We go up and go, wow, yeah. that's an extraordinary thing humans before us did. 
and it's optimistic, and it has the joy of discovery. And that has become PB and J, passion, beauty, and joy, J O D, joy of discovery. That's become a phrase with me and the staff.